Today on the Metal Roofing Channel, we're talking about how metal shingles do in various weather conditions, including extreme weather, and what type of engineering and testing they have in place. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel and welcome back to the Stamped Metal Roofing Series. I'm here with Todd Miller, president of Isaiah Industries again. Todd, thanks so much for being on the show again. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, so today we're talking about weather and how do metal shingles hold up against various types of weather, including wind, rain, earthquakes, fire. We have a lot to cover today. So let's start with durability of metal shingles and what that looks like. So Todd, I'm gonna turn it over to you and Adam. Talk to me about durability. So an interesting thing, you know, everyone always wants their metal roof to last, right? Oh, yeah. So we talk about durability and, and how long it will last. Interesting thing on that is there were actually metal shingles, actually right here in Pickwell, Ohio, there was a metal shingle manufacturer back in the early 1900s. Uh, really? There were a lot of uh, very simple stamped metal shingles uh, made, especially in steel country, mm -hmm. um, back in the late 1800s to early 1900s. And I could take you to communities not far from here that still have many of those Some of the original ones? That are 100 wow. plus years old at this okay. point. Of course, they didn't have the benefit of PVDF finishes and all those or types of things. Or coatings or right. G90, you name it. Yeah. But So they've had to keep them painted over the years in order to keep them up and everything. But, you know, when we talk about durability, one of the things I always have to look back is at the history and, mm -hmm. and what's happened. But, you know, overall, you know, durability, very similar to what you get with standing seam in terms mm -hmm. of uh, the, the coatings that we use and the expected life and the fade and the chalk resistance, um, the interlocking nature of the panels, of course, you know, so many roofing products really just depend upon gravity to hold them yeah. down on the roof and these products actually lock together. And so as a result, you know, that really plays well for that consumer who says, I want I want the last roof I'm ever going to have to buy. I want yeah. to be able to live here for another 40 years and not have to worry about my roof. Or we'll often hear from husbands saying, you know, I'm probably going to pass away. It's morbid. Probably will pass away before my wife does. I don't want her to have to worry about the roof. Yeah. And I've had couples in my eight, in their 80s tell me that. <laughs> um, listen, we, we've had those calls on our side of the world, too. Sure. Hey, you know, what does this mean, lifetime roof? What lifetime warranty? You know, are you going to live another 40 years? wasn't planning on it, you know, it's like, <laughs> you know and, and not just that, but in terms of durability, you know, you can't pry this up if you wanted to. You can't yank on it. Some of the other roofing types out there, you can just lift it with a finger and you see it kind of flapping there. And it's right. kind of to your point, it's weight is holding it down enough in cases or a roofing nail. What if the wind is driving it in that direction, flipping it up while it's raining, things like that. That happens. I mean, that's, that's not a, well, that only happens in this part of the country. That happens everywhere. And similarly, other roofing types that are, are held down with you know their own weight, be it slate, stone, tiles, things like that. You get a good driving storm or branch hits it and crack, and those things are sliding down. So. Sure, absolutely. So Todd, when we talk about durability, you know, a lot of areas of the country also get hail. So if I have a stamped metal shingle, what peace of mind do I have that, you know, if, if we get a significant hail event, that this is gonna hold up? Sure. Well, of course, there's the UL2218 test, which ranks products for impact resistance. Mm -hmm. And uh, the metal shingles that I'm familiar with um, all have been class four. Um, so they're given the highest rating. Mm -hmm. And of course, that class four rating is a two inch steel ball dropped from 20 foot um, oh. onto a sample without the product falling apart or cracking or anything like yeah. that. Um, we also, I know we as a company offer a warranty that the paint finish will not chip due to hail. Um, we also, for homeowners, offer a warranty that the product will not leak due to hail. Mm -hmm. And what that means is that for homeowners who maybe do go through a whopper storm that maybe yeah. totals out every roof, including every metal roof. And, you know, we see this in Texas and Oklahoma oh, yeah. where they get baseball, softball sized hail. 
at least those homeowners are not dealing with interior leaks until they can get a yeah, roofing contract. Or, or penetrations there. through the entire exactly. roof assembly. Yeah. The, the other thing that we find with these a lot, so generally speaking, my, my experience has been up to about golf ball size hail, there really is not anything noticeable. Yeah. And you can handle some hail larger than that. And the difference here is that the product is already so textured and so random in terms of its appearance that you can have some hail hits on it and no one would ever know it. So personal story, um, we don't get a lot of hail here in Ohio, but sure. sometimes we do. And I have had two hail storms that actually left damage on my car in the driveway and I don't see any damage on the roof. No kidding. If I got out there with a magnifying glass, I'd probably find it. Sure. Um, but it simply isn't visible because of the texture of the product that's already there. Do you have a recommendation for homeowners as far as do they take the hail waiver? Do they not take the hail waiver? What, what's your stance on that? Yeah, I've seen a lot of homeowners get really frustrated um, because they are in one of those hail belts that just gets the whopper storms mm -hmm. and they took the cosmetic waiver, meaning mm -hmm. that their roof got totaled out by hail. The insurance company says, no, the damage is all cosmetic. It's yeah. not really functional and the insurance company won't replace. And the reality is almost any time you have a metal roof that's been damaged by hail, yeah. they're gonna point largely to it being cosmetic rather than functional. So my advice to consumers is to, to rest with the assurance that you've got the best roof you could find, that it's very hail resistant, but I do not suggest signing yeah. a cosmetic and, waiver. And the discounts that we've seen, you know, we really stand our ground there to recommend homeowners stay away from that if possible. We've got a hail video explaining insurance, or I shouldn't just say hail, but a weather video explaining, you know, wind events, hail events, and, and kind of how it can impact your home. It's just like if you have a car. I'm sure you had filed a claim on your car, you know, and on sure. your insurance on your car when you have that hail event. So you don't want something that's going to be beat up and, and something that's not going to look great. So. And that's a great analogy. Would you accept a cosmetic waiver on your car? Probably not. Exactly. <laughs>
So we have a, a UL fire report um, okay. or fire listing with our product uh, or all of our products. And of course that will specify then the assembly that's mm -hmm. gonna be required to get them a class A, class B, class C rating based upon what's required in their sure. area. Um, but what a good question though, because you know we're hearing this a lot. So uh, it's been almost two years ago, hard to believe that there were the severe fires up in the Sonoma Napa area, north mm -hmm. of San Francisco and in the Paradise uh, Fire and so many beautiful homes and, and people lost so much in that. But what we're finding now is a lot of homeowners are now coming to us and saying, well, I've been working with my architect been working with the city. Mm -hmm. I'm finally ready to rebuild. And they start talking to us about fire ratings and what type of assembly is going to be required. Sure. And uh, as I mentioned, there's a lot of, there are different ways to achieve that um, based upon the assembly uh, that's been tested. And we've got that testing and so forth to help them. The building codes are also sometimes prescriptive in terms yeah. of what can, can get you uh, or what can achieve certain ratings. Yeah. And so the bottom line is we can help a homeowner achieve that fire protection that they want to give themselves the best possible chance yeah. next and, time. And that's, that's awesome. I mean, I, you know, as people rebuild or even want to build in a potentially high risk area, you know, you want that insurance that, you know, it's not just going to go up and smoke, you know, in the middle of the night one night. Right. So that's kind of a, one of the beautiful things. And, and we're really proud about metal, you know, coming from our world as well. Sure. So. Absolutely. So Todd, we're, we're talking durability, but with the durability, you know, you get something that's really lightweight. Correct. If I was holding this many clay tiles, slate tiles, I'd be crying uncle right now. So, you know, this might be soaking wet three pounds. So a lot of times when we talk about metal, we end up talking about what we call a low weight, high strength ratio. Mm -hmm. So you've got this combination of low weight, but yet a very lasting, sustainable, high, uh, strong product. Sure. Um, one of the things that was kind of interesting, so we do quite a bit of business in Japan and we established that business in Japan back after there was a severe earthquake in Kobe. Um, it's probably been 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And as they were rebuilding after that earthquake, they realized, of course, historically, Japan had used heavy tile, glazed tile type roofs. They realized we've got to go to low weight roofing materials because yeah. what they saw was a lot of structures got the seismic activity going on and suddenly that heavy weight just Collapse, collapsed yeah. either into the house or caused the walls to fall off. Okay. And so our Japanese business actually got developed after uh, the earthquake when people start saying we have to have some low weight roofing material. So it's a real plus in terms of that low weight. Yeah. And they want to try to keep that look too. It, it, absolutely. That was a factor as well. Yeah. Um, but you know, even beyond that, um, structures are aging mm -hmm. and just like as I get older, I find I don't want to have to carry around this much. Yeah. I've found ways to pull wheeled bags through the airport instead of on my backpack anymore and things like that. But houses are the same, structures yeah. are the same. So, so my church um, had a roof that was a clay tile roof that was about 80 years old and beautiful Spanish architecture. Um, they had to hit the point where they had to take the roof off, redo the underlayment, clean all the tile, put it back on about literally months later. Um, a major beam off over the sanctuary snapped under the weight of the oh, tile wow. roof, despite all the money they had just put into this tile roof. Mm -hmm. um, so at that point, the tile had to come off and they do have a low weight metal roof on there now. So what would you say? You think metal roofing weighs a 10th, a 20th? What do you, what do you think it would weigh compared to you know, sure. that Spanish tile, something yeah, like that. Yeah, so, so that Spanish tile was probably about 2,000 pounds a square, wow. with a square being 100 yeah, to 100 yeah. square feet. Um, and this product here is, uh, I believe, right around 87, 90 pounds uh, for that same amount of yeah. space. So much, much lower weight. That would be, you know, like a 20th. Sure, sure. So I hope that answers some questions about weather and how metal shingles do in different types of weather scenarios. If you have any questions, please comment down below. And if you have any specific questions, please contact your supplier. They're gonna have very specific answers to whatever product that you are interested in. Subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel for more information and stay tuned for more on the Stamps Metal Roofing Series. I'm Thad Barnett, and we'll catch you next time.